My name is Archbishop Tabo Makoba. It is wonderful to be back, let us say, the colleagues for the week together. Lord of the Feasts, you invite everyone to a banquet. Keep from us all that distract us and stir in us a desire to respond with gladness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us listen to a portion of Psalm 113. <laughs> Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th verse beginning from the 29th, so the 11th chapter beginning from the 29th verse. When the crowds were increasing, he began to say, This generation is an evil generation. It asks for sign, for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so the Son of Man will be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment <clears throat> with the people of this generation and condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth <coughs> to listen to the wisdom of Solomon and see something greater than Solomon is here. The people of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the proclamation of Jonah and see something greater than Jonah is here. <clears throat> Excuse the cough, There's a lot of pollen here outside. I want to reflect on the Psalms again for the whole of this week. The psalm that we have listened to, Psalm 113, is one of the great Hallel psalms, one of the great calls to have a heart of praise. The scholars tell us that the word praise is scattered throughout the psalms, probably around 186 times. It appears in all sorts of contexts, in various historical circumstances, in diverse emotional conditions, in all the ups and downs that mark our lives. Some spiritual writers obviously thinking of Handel's Hallelujah Chorus of the Psalms, 
it teaches the wonderful lesson that in all the vagaries of life, no matter the circumstances, we are called to have a heart of praise. Not because it is a quick fix, but because it helps us to keep in mind as we deal with life's curved balls, especially in the time as we understand more fully the costs of the pandemic, the perspective of God. There is in every circumstance the desire of God to see us through. The psalmist under, underlines three powerful reasons that all of us can trace in our own lives, which are deep reassurances for cultivating a heart of praise. We are reminded of God's glory, the glory that embraces the bigger picture and the long view and establishes all of that in a loving plan. So often in our lives, the small stuff, while very real, can also be a deflection and a destruction. We need to know that there is a bigger picture which we must bear in mind. We are reminded of God's greatness, a greatness that manifests itself in a million victories in history. Israel's history, as indeed our personal histories, are full of God's tuning, sort of turning things round for us, steering the course of our many battles towards victory. We need to build on that greatness. Paul would later acknowledge, if God is for us, who can be against us? Finally, we are reminded of God's grace that speaks to God's faithfulness and forgiveness, both of which daily allows us to take the next steps, to rise after we have fallen, and to keep hoping, even when the odds are against us. <clears throat> there is one critical, almost footnote to this psalm. We are reminded that praise also releases the power in history for the downtrodden to be raised up. Praise is a source of agency for the poor and the marginalized to change the course of history. It is not just a pious practice. It is a process of public transformation that is a blessing beyond measure. Amen.